In this video, we're gonna go over a whole bunch of things that you can do with the text tool in Adobe Animate. All right, so obviously to get started, we are gonna need some text. So the text tool is right over here. Just click on it and there's two ways to add text to the stage. One way is to draw a box. So I just clicked and started dragging out and then you let go. And then in there you can start typing your word. The better way is just honestly to just click on the stage and then just this narrow one will come up. You'll type in your word and then now no matter what you write, it's going to continue to go. So it kind of expands and adjusts to your word instead of the other way around. Okay, so now that we have our text, let's just go over to properties and under object. This is kind of where all the regular stuff is to allow you to manipulate text. So your font, color, all that kind of stuff. But just know that you have to be highlighted. Like you have to highlight your word for any of it to work. If I'm just clicked beside it like this, and let's say I try and change the color, nothing is gonna happen, okay? So you have to highlight your word, and then you can right here, this is where you can click under character and change your font. So I'm just going to, well actually I'm just gonna stay with that font. Uh, down here is your size, so I can change this to, you know, let's say 350 and it'll adjust. You can change your kerning, so if you slide this to the right, it'll separate your letters more, and if you slide it to the left, it's gonna crunch them in, so that's kerning. Right here is obviously your color, so I'm gonna just switch to red, and obviously you can see that it doesn't happen when it's highlighted, right? You're gonna have to click off to be able to see what you have done, right? So if I highlight it again, I can go right down here, and this one is subscript, so if you have, let's say, you know, like some of them written like this, you can click this and it becomes subscript or this becomes superscript. So like a, uh, like a power in math or just normal again. And then if we go down here, you can see some paragraph things and that just adjusts things within your box. So let's say I just expand the box a little bit. If I click center align, it's not gonna be for the whole stage. It's just gonna be for this box. If we go up to the very top right here, this like color painting canvas thing and click on that. And you can see here that right now it's a solid color that we have. And if I try to click on linear gradient, nothing happens. It stays as a solid color because right now we have our kind of original text. So let's take a look at what else we can do to this to have more control. Okay, so instead of just typing it and leaving it in this box, the next thing you can do is right click and then go down here to break apart or control B. So when you do that, boom, it separates it into individual letters, but they're still in their like text boxes, right? So I can now click into this one and type something new in there because it's its own text box, okay? But if you want more control, like even more control, I'm gonna actually highlight all of them again like that. You can right click and break apart again. And now it turns them into essentially a graphic that we can manipulate in a lot more ways. Right now we have basics, like everything written on one layer here. I'm gonna keep that, but I'm also going to right click and duplicate it so that I can now take the duplicate layer and drag it down here and then break up each of these letters onto its own layer over here, okay? So to do that, you just go up to modify, down to timeline, and over to distribute to layers. And you'll notice that over here, besides basics copy, you can actually get rid of that now, just trash it. And you can see that each of these, if I click the eyeball here, is one of the letters. Now, they might not show up in order though, so make sure you click the eyeball to see which one it is, because this one's I, for example, and this one's B. So before I move on, I'm just gonna name them all and then put them back in order. Okay, so now if we take a look down here, you can see we have two versions of the word basics. The first one here is our original basics title up top, and you can see when I click on the word basics, you can see all these like little dots that show up on every single letter. But if I click on just the B here, obviously it's just gonna show up like that on the B. Now, if I also click on the keyframe here for basics and they're all selected, I can move the entire word at the same time, like all the letters at the same time. To do that with basics here, I can just, with my selection tool here, I can click over in the white and draw a box around all of them and then move it together if I want. To move letters individually, if I want here, 
I can't be selected on the keyframe. I have to click somewhere else so it's not selected. And then I can still click on the word on the letter B and it's selected now. And I can move it separate from the whole word. For these ones down here, all you have to do is click on the keyframe of the B and you can move it and do the same thing. For either one, if you are not selected, so you can't be selected on it, it has to be like the A here where I'm not selected or the B like for basics, I can go to the edge with my selection tool and you'll see this little curvy line that shows up and you can actually bend and like reshape your letters to be whatever you want. But again, if you've selected it, now that doesn't show up. So if I go down here, I can bend this B the same. And since I'm still not selected on this A, I can now tweak the A and do whatever I want there as well. Something else you can do while not being selected on letters is maybe go to your paint bucket tool and you know pick a color. So I'll pick maybe a dark green like this and you can just you know use the paint bucket tool to change the color to whatever you want. You can also right click in here and change it to the ink bottle tool and that will allow you over here to pick a stroke color like so an outline. So I'm gonna keep it at black and just make it a little bit smaller. So whatever you click on, it'll add that outline. So if I went smaller, you can see that it's smaller and uh, you can change the style and stuff here. So let's do it a dotted one and uh, then try again. So now it's, oh, it was too big. So if I drop this right down, then you'll see the dotted one like that. If you want to apply a gradient to a letter, then just go back to your selection tool and pick on the layer that you want. So I'm going to do it to this S go up here to this kind of paintbrush thing here, the one that we talked about before. And now when it says solid color, you can pick linear gradient, radial gradient, or bitmap fill. If you click on linear gradient, you can see that that's going to be like just a straight line, like one color fading to another. To change your colors, just click on one of these two boxes, like double click on it. It'll bring up your color swatches. So you can change it to whatever you want. I'll change it to red. And you can do the same thing to this one, double click, I'll keep it at kind of a yellow. And if you want more control over what that looks like, if you go over here to your gradient transform tool and click on that now, you'll get this kind of slider thing here. And the middle allows you to move it so you can have it, you can change where the color falls. The one at the top here is if you wanna rotate it, so you wanna have it go from, let's say top to bottom or an angle or something. And then right here is where you can expand it to make it a little more gradual or, you know, like really harsh lines. So those are a few options right there. So if I go back to basics and I click on this S now, I'll put on a different gradient. So I'm going to change it to radial gradient and let's uh, just keep the same colors. But now when we go over to our gradient transform tool, you can see there's kind of a different thing. The middle is the same, so you can, you know, move this around. This, if you click on that triangle, you can move kind of just where it's the center point is. So if you want it a little more to the side or if you want it right in the middle, this one right here is to rotate it. But if it's in the middle, you're not going to see much. So maybe I'll just move this over. So if you rotate it, now you can see it kind of moving. And this one right here is to expand it out. So again, really harsh lines or make them really blurred and blend into each other. So you can adjust it there. And then this one is to stretch it out. Okay, so if you want it to be like collapsed or if you want it to be spread out. If I go back to my selection tool and then click on the eye down here, I'm gonna show you one more under this right here, under color. We're gonna go to bitmap fill. And in there, if you have any images, like you can kind of barely see it here. So this image is now showing within the eye. So maybe I'll just import a new image and maybe make it like this Batman one. You can, and then I'll select it right here. So to change them, you just pick on it right there and you can see that it kind of shows up. It would obviously work better if I used it for like the whole word. So let's see if I can click on this whole word and then go back in here and change it to bitmap fill and then to the Batman symbol, right? So you can see that it would fill all of the letters all at once. And then obviously if I click on the keyframe for the word basics again, and then go up to the color swatch thing here and change this from bitmap fill to linear gradient, you can see that it'll impact the entire word as well. Now, if you wanna learn how to do some animations with your text, like tweens, transformations, fades, and other filter effects, make sure to check out my next video. It's right there on the screen. Click it. Thank you. Like and subscribe.